This is Hi Fam. I'm Avital. Today, I want to tell you five ways that independent play is like therapy for your child. So yes, therapy still has its place if your child really needs it, but every child can use the therapeutic and healing powers of play. And I'm going to show you exactly how and why in this video. So stay tuned. Number one, play equals flow. Flow is the term that the Austrian psychotherapist Mihai Sanchik Mihai has coined to describe the state where we are immersed in a challenging and rewarding activity. You might feel a state of flow when you're working on a creative project, when you're dancing, when you're running. It's a state where you are uninhibited, where you're not self-conscious about your body, where you actually forget about your bodily needs altogether and time stands still. You don't worry about the clock ticking away, you're not bored, you're not rushed, and you're not doing it for some reward or for some accolade that someone else will give you. It's intrinsically rewarding. That is that state of flow, and I bet you've been in that state, and I wish you to be in it for as much as possible. Why? Because flow is incredibly beneficial for our mental well-being. That's right, people who suffer from mental health challenges are often not spending enough time in this state of flow where they are challenged, but not too challenged where something that they're doing is really meaningful to them, where they're doing it not because of a grade or because they're going to get paid for it, but because they love it. It's where they feel growth. It's where they feel alive and in touch and like they're doing something important, valuable and significant. Well, the cool thing is that all of the markers, all of the signifiers of a state of flow are present in children when they're playing. It's a supremely playful state. It's when all of our basic needs are taken care of and we're able to sink into something for the sake of it. When a child is playing, and I hope you've had the great pleasure and honor of witnessing this in your own child, they are immersed. They're completely absorbed and engaged. They're not doing it for a reward. They're not doing it out of fear of punishment. They're not constantly distracted. In fact, they're very deeply focused in a way that you maybe never see them focused otherwise, right? It's a very special and unique type of focus. And the cool thing is that the longer we stay in this state of flow every day, the more beneficial it is for our mental well-being. It's this kind of restful state, but it's not you know, sleeping, it's actually expanding our skills in a way that is enjoyable to us. And that's profoundly healing for kids. And that's why I say it's a bit like a therapy because it really gives them confidence. It gives them calm. It helps them to regulate their emotions. It helps them with executive function. It helps them with many of the other areas of their lives. And you might have experienced this if you've had an amazing, you know, session writing or doing yoga and you were in deep flow, you just forgot yourself. You lost yourself into the activity. And then you come out of that feeling really refreshed. And that's what play can do for our children. Number two, in independent play, children actually work through difficulties. They work through even traumas, big T traumas and little T traumas. Now, big T traumas, of course, do need actual therapy, clinical therapy, but play is often a big part of that therapy. And even outside of therapy or when there's no therapy present, play can serve as a therapeutic means to making sense of difficult things that we've been through. But even if it's as mundane and inconsequential as your child scraping their knee, what you'll see is that after they've had a stumble and they scrape their knee, they will bring that theme into their play. Suddenly their doll will fall and scrape their knee and they can suddenly be the doctor that's there to help them and put a band-aid on them or the mummy that's there to pick them up and soothe them. In play, children are allowed to work through narrative and there are many different therapeutic modules and modems that are based on understanding narrative. In fact, Dr. Daniel Siegel explains that trauma doesn't metastasize as trauma when we are able to metabolize the narrative. In other words, when we can make sense of what has happened to us, that's when we can heal from a trauma. So that's why the advice is that when children go through something difficult, say, even just something like having a nasty fall, we don't want to avoid the topic. You know, often parents are drawn to do this, like, oh, let's not talk about the fall. Let's not upset her again. She's going to cry. She's going to remember what happened. No, we actually want to bring it up 
and rehash it and tell the story and make sense of it. Oh, you were running so fast and then you tripped, you didn't see the rock and then you fell on the floor and it was rough and your knees started bleeding and that scared you. It got, you know, you got blood on your pants and then, you know, I picked you up and we went and we got a band-aid and we washed it and we put some antiseptic cream on it and now it's still quite sore. The more times we tell that story, the more desensitized the child becomes to it and they kind of metabolize it. They become a bit bored with it. Like, okay, I've got it now, right? I've made sense of it. I know what happened. It's not so shocking anymore. Trauma is actually another way of saying shock. When we're in a severe shock, that's what creates trauma. But when something is shocking or surprising, but we make sense of it, even severe shock, uh, even things that were really, you know, terrible traumas, when people are able to talk through them and understand what happened to them, that's when they don't leave lasting psychological effects, right? That's when people are able to actually heal. Their PTSD, for example, is when they can metabolize and understand what was the thing that traumatized them, what happened, and play offers that to our children in a natural way. Children will bring the themes that have been difficult for them into their play and they'll act them out in a kind of psychodrama style or bibliotherapy, right? This is narrative therapy, therapy through telling a story, therapy through acting it out, therapy through role play. These are all therapeutic modules that we actually use as adults. They're modems that are 100%, you know, clinically used and proven. But children bring those same themes in through their play. And so it's like free therapy in in that regard. Hey, do me a huge favor and slam on that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. If this is the type of topic that speaks to you and if you think it might help your friends, then make sure to share it out. The third way that play is like therapy is that in play, children actually bring up very dark themes and questions that they might have. You know, many of us parents are really uncomfortable with these dark themes like violence or death coming into play, <laughs> literally in children's games. But the truth is that that's kind of a huge part of what it's there for. It's there for them to make sense of the world, to make sense of things that are really uncomfortable, to make sense of things that don't make sense, uh, and to play their hand at different roles in society. A child who plays pirates isn't gonna grow up to be a pirate. A child who plays with guns isn't gonna grow up to be a mass murderer. The idea is that they actually explore difficult themes, touchy subjects or hard questions through the safe container of imaginary life. This is like us watching a movie about something, right? When you watch a movie, a horror movie say, it doesn't mean that you wish those things happened in your real life or that you're now gonna go and do those things. It means that you want to kind of expose yourself and understand and play with and imagine these themes and these things happening. Not that they're real. There's a huge differentiation between what happens in children's imagination in their play and what happens in their real life. And in fact, there's interesting research to show that when children are allowed to play out, say, violent themes like war games, they're actually less, not more, likely to be violent in real life. And that's because it serves as a form of outlet, if you like, right? It's a creative, artistic place to explore themes that are dangerous in real life. When children play these themes, they're making sense of them. They're trying them on for size. And they're often exploring really profound and important subjects like morality, like being noble, being loyal, uh, goodies and baddies themes, that's what they are. They're about understanding the forces of kind of good and evil and how I can position myself in that grand narrative, right? That's why we're drawn to epic tales and myths, right? That's why we love things like Harry Potter and Star Wars, because they are artistic representations of moral conundrums and real themes in our lives of understanding who we are and where we stand on different issues and what energies we bring to the table. So children are making sense of themselves and forming an identity when they're allowed to play to these dark themes and play them out. And the truth is when they're not allowed to explore identities, when children can't try on the cape and be Superman and put on the mask and be a lion and, you know, just dress up as different things, suddenly, you know, gaining those powers of whatever it is that they're dressing up as, then they never fully graduate from that stage and make peace with and understand their own real identities. Identity exploration should happen when children are little. That's the place for them to dress up and pretend. And that's the power of pretend play. It's 
highly important for their development and highly therapeutic. Number four way that play is like therapy is that play can actually help children to prepare for transitions in their lives. Say they're having another baby in the family, they're moving country, they're moving school, something's changing in their life, their parents are going through a divorce. Whatever it is, whatever the challenge that they're about to face, whether it's mundane or tragic or big or small, play can help them prepare for it. When they play out certain themes, say, I know I'm going to a new school and now I'm playing school. It's the first day of school. Here's kids who don't know each other. Here's a new teacher. Here's new rules. I've got to pack my backpack. I've got to sit quietly, right? When I'm playing that out, I'm actually practicing for real life. Play in mammals is always about practicing skills that are going to serve them in their adult life, in their culture. And that is highly therapeutic and highly helpful to our children's mental strength, resilience, and well-being. Hey, you know what? Let me know in the comments below what is the most bizarre or interesting or typical thing that your child plays about? Like, what is the theme that keeps coming up for your kid? Is there something that they always love doing? Is it, you know, mermaids or firemen or war games? Or what is it that's capturing their imagination at the moment? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. And number five, play is like therapy because it truly builds an innate sense of confidence. When children play, they get to know themselves they can enjoy their own company. They learn how to entertain themselves. They learn how to get in touch with their imagination, with their own thoughts and feelings. They learn that it is safe and appropriate and okay to do so in a low stakes and contained environment where things are just pretend, where nothing you say is gonna be held against you, where you're able to explore and express yourself artistically and through your body, right? You could be playing at dance, putting on a show, you could be painting, you know? And again, these are all modems of therapy, dance therapy, art therapy. There's a reason that we have these as therapies. In the adult world, we've understood and conceptualized these as therapeutic, but they are naturally present in play. Children are drawn to all of these modems as ways of self-expression, as ways of getting in touch with what they want to say, with who they are, with their message for the world, with what they want to process, what they want to prepare for. And so you see, play is tremendously powerful. It's a powerful agent for your child. And if your child is going through a hard time, they're having a lot of tantrums, they're having nightmares, they're anxious, they're worried, they're scared, they're having difficulty making friends, they're wetting the bed, anything that you are struggling with, you will find that the therapeutic powers of play help you in helping them. If you make time for them and if you teach them how to play independently, you will see the issues that are most top of mind for them rising to the surface and being understood, being made sense of, being metabolized and even being prepared to move forward and heal from these you know, irksome and worrisome issues that might be facing them. So whatever it is that you are concerned about with your child, whether it's just day-to-day regular kid stuff or something a little bit bigger, I urge you to reclaim the power of play. If you want more help doing that from me, go to reclaimplay.com and take the Reclaim Play course. It's absolutely exactly tailor-made and catered to you helping your child step deeply into that imagination. And of course, it's great for you as well, especially if you want to get stuff done in your life while your child is playing. And I have many more videos, so check them out all about the power of play. I hope to see you in Reclaim Play. And meanwhile, just enjoy and notice and take note of all of those times that your child is playing and see just how powerful it is. It's right under our noses, but so often we don't notice. So much love to you. Keep on living that high fam life and I'll see you in the next video.